From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, your host for Cloud Native Insights. When we launched the series, one of the things we wanted to talk about uh, was that we're not just using cloud as a destination, but really enabling new ways of thinking, being able to use the innovations underneath the cloud, and that if you use services in the cloud, that you're not necessarily locked into a solution or can't move forward. And that's why I'm really excited to help. Welcome to the program. I have the co-founders of Vendia. First, we have Dr. Tim Wagner. He is the co-founder and CEO of the company, as well as generally known in the industry as the father of serverless from the AWS Lambda and his co-founder, Shruti Rao. She is the chief business offer at Vendia, also came from AWS where she worked on blockchain solutions. Tim and Shruti, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us in here, Stu. Great to join the show. All right, so Shruti, I, I, actually, if we could start with you, because before we get into Vendia coming out of stealth, you know, really interesting uh, you know, technology space, um, you and Tim both learned a lot from working with customers in your previous jobs. Why don't we start from you? Blockchain, of course, had a lot of learnings, a lot of things that people don't understand about what it is and what it isn't. So give us a little bit about what you've learned and help that led towards uh, what, you, what you and Tim and the team are doing with Vendia. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one most important thing that we've all heard of was this great gravitational pull towards blockchain in 2018 and 2019. Well, I was one of the founders and uh, early uh, adopters of blockchain in, in from, from Bitcoin and Ethereum space all the way back from 2011 onwards. And at AWS, I started uh, the Amazon managed blockchain and launched Quantum Ledger Database, two services in the blockchain category. What I learned there was no surprise there. There was a gold rush to blockchain from many customers. Um, we, I personally talked to over 1,092 customers when, when I ran Amazon Managed Blockchain in, for the last two years. And I found that customers were looking at uh, solving this dispersed data problem. Most of my customers had invested in IoT and edge devices, and these edge devices were gathering massive amounts of data. And on the flip side, they also had invested quite a bit of uh, um, effort in AI and ML and analytics to crunch this data, give them intelligence. But guess what? This data existed in multiple parties, in multiple clouds, in multiple technology stacks and they needed a mechanism to get this data from wherever they were into one place so they could use their AI ML analytics investment. And they wanted all of this to be done in real time and they gravitated towards blockchain. But blockchain had quite a bit of limitations. It was not scalable. It didn't work with uh, the existing stack that you had. It forced enterprises to adopt this new technology and entirely new type of uh, infrastructure. It didn't work cross cloud unless you hired expensive consultants or did it yourself and required these specialized developers. For all of these reasons, we've seen many POCs, majority of POCs just dying on the vine and not ever reaching the production potential. So that is when I realized that what the problem to be solved was not the trust problem, the problem was Disperse data in multiple clouds, multiple stacks problem, sometimes multiple parties even problem. And that's when Tim and I started talking about, uh, about how can we bring all of the nascent qualities of Lambda and serverless and use all of the features of blockchain and build something together. And he has an interesting story on his own, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, truth, truthy, if I could, I, I, I'd like to get a little bit of that. So first of all, for our audience, uh, if you're watching, you're watching this on the man, probably want to hit pause, you know, go search Tim, go, uh, you know, watch a video, read his medium post about the past, present and future of serverless. But yeah, Tim, I I'm excited. You and I have talked in the past, but finally getting you on, uh, on the yeah. Cube program. Um, you know, I, I look through my career and, you know, my background is infrastructure and the role of infrastructure we know is always just, just to support the applications and the data that run business. That's what is important. Even when you talk about cloud, it is the applications, you know, the code and the data that are important. So it's not that 
you know, okay, I've got, you know, near infinite compute capacity. It's the new things that I can do with it. Uh, it's a comment I heard in, in, in one of your, your sessions. Uh, you talked about one of the most fascinating things about serverless was just the new creativity uh, that it inspired people to do. And I loved it. It wasn't just unlocking <laughs> developers to say, okay, I have new ways to write things, but even people that weren't traditional coders. I've talked to people in marketing that were like, I can start with this and build something new. So I guess the question I have for you is, you know, we had this idea of you know, platform as a service, where even when things like you know, containers um, launched, it was we were trying to get close to that atomic unit of the application, uh, and often it was talked about, well, do I want it for portability? Or is it for ease of use? So you, you've been wrangling and, and looking at this from a lot of different <laughs> ways. So is that, as a starting point, you know, what did you see you know, the last few years with, with Lambda and you know, help connect us up to where uh, Shruti just left off her bit of the story? Absolutely. You know, look, the, the great story, the great success of the cloud is this elimination of undifferentiated heavy lifting, you know, from getting rid of having to build out a data center to, you know, all the, all the complexity of managing hardware. And, you know, and that first wave of the, you know, of cloud adoption was, was just phenomenally successful at that. But, you know, but as you, you know, as you say, like the real, the real thing businesses wrestle with are applications, right? It's ultimately about the, the business solution, not the, not the hardware and software in which it runs. So the, the very first time I sat down with Andy Jassy to talk about what eventually became Lambda, you know, one of the things I said was, look, uh, if we want to get 10x the number of people to come and, you know, and be in the cloud and be successful, it has to be 10 times simpler than it is today. Uh, you know, if, if step one is hire a, a, you know, an amazing team of distributed uh, engineers to turn a server into a, a fault tolerant, scalable, reliable business solution, uh, that's going to be fundamentally limiting. And we have to find a way to put that in a box, to give that capability, you know, to people without having them go hire that in the, and build that out in the first place. And so that kind of started this, you know, this journey for, for compute, for trying to solve the problem of making uh, compute as easy to use as possible. You know, take some code, as you said, you know, even if you're not a, a, a diehard programmer or back-end engineer, uh, maybe you're just a full-stack um, uh, engineer who, who loves working on the front end, but the back end isn't your focus, turn that into something that is as scalable, as robust, as secure as somebody who, you know, who has spent their entire career working on that. And that was the, that was the promise of, of, of serverless um, you know, outside of the, the, the specifics of any one, of any one cloud. Now, the, the challenge, of course, when you talk to customers is, you know, is that you always heard, uh, you know, you always heard these, uh, these same two considerations. You know, one is, uh, I, you know, I love the idea of Lambda, but it's AWS. Maybe I have multiple departments or business partners or need to kind of work on, on multiple clouds. The other challenge is um, fantastic for compute. What about, what about data? You know, you've kind of left me with, you gave me sort of half the solution. Uh, you've made my compute super easy to use. Uh, can you make my data equally easy to use? And so, you know, obviously the part of the genesis of, uh, of Vendia is going and tackling those pieces of this, right? Giving all that, that promise and easy use of serverless uh, now with a model for uh, replicated state and data uh, and one that can cross accounts, machines, departments, clouds, companies as, uh, you know, as easily as it, uh, as easily as, as it scales on a single cloud today. Okay, so you covered quite a bit of ground there, Tim. Uh, if you could just unpack that a little bit, uh, because you, you talk about you know state cutting across uh, in environments. What is it that that Vendia is bringing? How does that tie into uh, solutions like you know Lambda, as you mentioned, but you know other clouds or you know even uh, you know potentially on-premises uh, solutions? So, uh, what is you know the the IP, the code, uh, the the solution that that Vendia is offering? Happy to. So you know, let's let's start with the customer problem here. The thing that, that every enterprise, every company, frankly, you know, wrestles with is in the modern world, they're producing more data than ever. IoT, digital journeys, uh, you know, mobile, edge devices, uh, more data coming in than, than ever before. Uh, at the same time, more data getting consumed than ever before with, uh, you know, with deep analytics, supply chain optimization, AI, ML. So even more consumers of, of ever more data the challenge, of course, is that data isn't always inside a company's four walls. In fact, we've heard 80% or more of that data actually lives outside of a company's
companies uh, control. So step one to doing something like AI ML isn't, uh, isn't even just picking a, a product or selecting a technology, it's getting all of your data back together again. So that's the problem that we set out to, uh, to, to solve with Vendia. And we realized that, you know, and, and kind of part of the genesis for the name here, you know, ben, Vendia comes from Venn Diagram. Uh, so part of that need to bring uh, code and data together across companies, across tech stacks, um, means the ability to solve some of these longstanding challenges. And we looked at the two, the two sort of big movements out there, uh, two that we've, you know, we've obviously both been involved in. One of the serverless, which uh, amazing ability to scale, but single account, single cloud, single company. Uh, the other one is blockchain and distributed ledgers. Manages to run, you know, across parties, uh, across clouds, across tech stacks, um, but doesn't have a great mechanism for scalability. It's really a single box deployment model. And obviously there are a lot of limitations with that. So our technology and our kind of our insight and breakthrough here was bringing those two things together by solving the problems in each of them with the best parts of the other. So reimagine a blockchain as a cloud native implementation built entirely out of service, serverless components that have all of the scale, the cost efficiencies, the high utilization, like all the ease of deployment that something like Lambda has today. And at the same time, you know, bring state to serverless. Give things like Lambda and, uh, and the, the equivalent of other clouds a simple, easy, built-in model so that applications can have multi-cloud, a multi-account state at all times, rather than turning that into a complicated DIY project. So that was kind of our, that was our insight here, you know, and the, frankly, where a lot of that, um, where a lot of the, the interesting technology for us is in turning those centralized services, uh, the centralized version of, of serverless compute or serverless database into a multi-account, multi-cloud experience. And so that's where we've spent a lot of time and energy trying to build something that gives customers a great experience. Yeah, so I, I've got plenty of background in customers that you know have the the information silos, if you will. So uh, you know we we know in the unstructured data, so, you know so much of it is not searchable. I can't leverage it. Uh, you know, uh, truthy, but maybe it might make sense. Um, you know, what is the you know would you say some of the top things some of your early customers are saying? You know, I have this pain point. You know, that's pointing me in your direction. What was leading them to you, and uh, you know how how does the solution? Uh, help them solve that problem. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of our design partners, early design partners, is this automotive company. They're a premier automotive company. They want their end goal is to track car parts for warranty recalls issue. So they want to track every single part that goes into a particular car. So there are about thirty to thirty-five thousand parts in each of these cars. And then all the way from manufacturing floor to when the car is sold and when that particular part is replaced eventually toward the end of the life cycle of that part. So for this, they have put together a small test group of uh, their partners, a couple of uh, uh, the parts manufacturers, their second tier partners, um, National Highway Safety Administration is part of this group, also a couple of dealers and service centers. Now, if you just look at this group of partners, you will see some of these parties have high technology um, uh, technology backgrounds, just like the auto manufacturers themselves or the part manufacturers. Low modality or low IT competency partners, such as the service centers, for them, desktop PCs, literally the IT competency, and so does the service centers. Now, most of, majority of these are on multiple clouds. This particular auto customer is on AWS, uh, a manufacturer is on Azure, another one is on GCP. Now, they all have to share these large files uh, between each other, making sure, while making sure that there are some transparency and business rules applicable. For example, two partners who make the same parts or similar parts cannot see each other's data. Uh, most of the participants cannot see the PII data that are not applicable. Only the service center can see that. National Highway Safety Administration has read access, not write access. All of that needed to be done and their alternatives before they started using Vendia was either use point-to-point -point APIs, which was very expensive, very cumbersome. It works for a finite small set of uh, parties. It does not scale with the, as and when you add more participants into this particular network. 
The second option for them was blockchains, which they did use. They used uh, Hyperledger Fabric, they used Ethereum Private to see how this works. But the scalability with Ethereum Private, it's about 14 to 15 transactions per second. With Hyperledger Fabric, it taps out at 100 or 150 on a good day. Transaction throughput's not just useful. Although all of these are always on systems, they're not serverless. So just provisioning capacity, our customers said it took them two to three weeks per participant. So it's just not a scalable solution. With Vendia, what we delivered to them was this virtual data lake where the, the sources of this data are on multiple clouds or on multiple accounts owned by multiple parties, but all of that data is shared on a virtual data lake with all of the permissions, with all of the logging, with all of the security, PII, and compliance, now this particular auto manufacturer and the National Highway Safety Administration can run their ML algorithms to gain intelligence off of it and start to understand patterns of when certain parts go bad or what, what's the propensity of a certain manufacturing unit uh, producing faulty parts and so on and so forth. This really shows you this, this, this concept of unstructured data being shared between parties that are not interconnected with each other while when there are data silos. But I will also follow this up with another example of you know, the democratization. Democratization is very important to Vindia. Uh, when Tim launched Lambda and founded the AWS serverless and serverless movement uh, as a whole and at AWS, one thing very important thing happened. It lowered the barrier to entry for a new wave of businesses that could just experiment, try out new things. If it failed, they scrap it. If it worked, they could scale it out. And that was possible because of the entry point, because of the paper use and the architecture itself. And we are, our vision and mission for Vendia is that Vindia fuels the next generation of multi-party connected distributed applications. Our second design partner is actually a nonprofit that uh, is in animal welfare industry. Their mission is to maintain a no kill uh, for dogs and cats in the United States. And the number one reason for overpopulations of dogs and cats in the shelters is uh, dogs lost, dogs and cats lost during um, natural disasters like the hurricane season. And when that happens, and when let's say your dogs get lost and you want to find the dog, the ID or the chip reading is not reliable. They want to search this through pictures. But we also know that if you look at a picture of a dog, four people can come up with four different breed names. So, and this particular nonprofit has 2,500 plus partners across the US and they're all low to no IT modalities. Some of them have higher IT competency uh, and, a, and a huge turnover because of volunteer employees. So what we did for them was came up with a mechanism where they could connect with all 2,500 of these participants very easily in a very cost-effective way and get all of the pictures of all of the dogs and all these repositories into one data lake so they can run some kind of a dog facial recognition algorithm on it and identify where my lost dog is in minutes as opposed to days it used to take before. So you see a, a very large customer with very sophisticated IT competency use this also a nonprofit being able to use this. And they were, they were both able to get to this outcome in days, not months or years as a traditional blockchain, but just under a few days. So we're very excited about that. Thank you so much for, for the examples. All right, Tim, before we get to the end, uh, I'm wondering if you could take us under the hood a little bit here. Um, my understanding, uh, the, the solution that you talk about, if it's universal apps or what you call unis, uh, unis? I, I believe. <laughs> um, so if, if, I, if I saw that right, um, give me a little bit of a compare and contra contrast, if you will. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of you know, interest in what Kubernetes has been doing. Uh, we've been watching closely. You know, there's connections between what Kubernetes is doing and serverless with the Knative project. Uh, when you know, I saw the first video talking about Vendia, you said you know, we're serverless and we're even containerless underneath so help us understand because at you know a super high level some of the 
you know, multi-cloud and making things, uh, you know, very flexible, um, they sound very similar. So, you know, how is Vendia different? And, you know, why, why do you feel your architecture, uh, you know, helps solve this, you know, really challenging uh, problem? Sure, sure, awesome. You know, look, the, uh, uh, one of the tenets that we had here was that things have to be as easy as possible for customers. And if you think about the way somebody walks up today to, uh, to an existing database system, right? They, they, they say, look, I've got a schema. I know the shape of my data. Uh, and a few minutes later, I can get a production database. Now it's single user, single cloud, you know, single, uh, single consumer there. But, uh, but it's a very fast, simple process that doesn't require having code, hiring a team, et cetera. And we wanted Vendia to work the same way. Somebody can walk up with a JSON schema, hand it to us five minutes later, they have, uh, they have a database, only now it's a multi-party database that runs, that's decentralized. So it runs across multiple platforms, multiple clouds, uh, you know, multiple technology stacks instead of, uh, instead of being single user. The, so that's, that's gonna go one is like, make that, as, make that as easy to use as possible. The other key tenet though is, we don't wanna be the least common denominator of the cloud. One of the challenges with saying everyone's gonna deploy their own servers, they're gonna run all their, own, all, their, all their own software, they're gonna build, you know, they're all gonna go deploy, uh, you know, a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, one of the challenges with that is that, as Shruti was saying, first, you know, first anyone for whom that's a challenge. If you're, uh, uh, if you don't have a whole IT department wrapped around you, that's a, that's a difficult proposition uh, to get, you know, to get started on, no matter how amazing that technology might be. The other challenge with it though, is that it, locks you out uh, is sort of the, the inverse of the lock-in process, right? It's the lock-out process. Uh, it locks you out of some of the best and brightest things that the public cloud providers have come up with. And we wanted to empower customers to, you know, to pick the best of breed. Maybe, maybe they want to go use IBM Watson. Maybe they want to use a database on Google. And at the same time, they want to ingest IoT on AWS and they want it all to work together. They want that, all of that to be seamless, not something where they have to recreate an experience over and over and over again on three different clouds. So that was our, that was our goal here in, in producing this. You know, what, we, what we designed as an architecture was uh, decentralized uh, data storage uh, at the core of it. So uh, think about all, these, all the precepts you hear with, with blockchain, they're all there, they all just look different. So uh, you know, we use a NoSQL database uh, to, to, store, to store data so that we can scale that easily. We still have a consensus algorithm, only now it's a high-speed serverless uh, and cloud function-based uh, mechanism. You know, instead of smart contracts, you write things in, uh, in a cloud function like Lambda instead. So no more learning solidity, now you can use any language you want. So we changed how we think about that, that architecture, but many of those ideas that got people about ex really excited about blockchain and its capabilities and, its, and the vision for the future uh, are still alive and well. Uh, they've just been implemented in a way that's far more practical and effective for the enterprise. All right, so what environments can I, I, I use today uh, for your solution? Shruti talked uh, about customers, you know, spanning across some of the clouds. So, you know, what's available kind of today? What's on the roadmap in the future? Uh, will this include, you know, beyond, you know, this uh, maybe the top, you know, five or six hyperscalers? Can I do, uh, does it just require serverless underneath? So will things that are in a customer's own data center eventually support that? Ab absolutely. So what we're, what we're doing right now is having people sign up for our preview release. So in the next few weeks, we're going to start turning that on uh, for early access to developers. Uh, that'll be the early access program will be uh, multi-account. Uh, focused on AWS, and then end of summer, we'll be doing our GA release, which will be multi-cloud. So we'll actually be able to operate uh, uh, across multiple clouds, multiple cloud services on different platforms. Uh, but even from day one, we'll have API support in there. So if you've got a service, uh, could even be running on a mainframe, uh, could be on-prem. Uh, if it's API-based, you can still interact with Vendia and still get the benefits of the, of the system. So. You know, developers, so please, uh, uh, please start signing up. Uh, you can go find more information on vendia.net. Uh, and we're really looking forward to getting some of that, uh, that early feedback and, and hear more from the people that we're the most excited to, you know, have start building these projects. Excellent, well, great call to action to get the developers and the users in there. Shruti, if you could just give us the last bit, you know, how the, the thing that's been fascinating, uh, you know, Tim, when I look at, uh, you know, the serverless movement, you know, I've talked to some amazing companies that were, you know, 
two or three people and, you know, out of their basement <laughs> and they created a business and then, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, I got VC funding and it's usually sub $10 million. So, you know, I look at your team. I had heard, you know, Tim, you're, you know, the, the primary, uh, you know, coder on, on the team. Uh, and <laughs> when it comes to the seed funding, it's, you know, compared to, you know, many startups, it, it's a small number. So Shruti, uh, give us a little bit, if you could, the speeds and feeds of, of the company, your funding and any places that you're hiring. Yeah, uh, we are definitely hiring. Let's me start from there. We're hiring for developers uh, uh, and we are also hiring for solution architects. So please go to vindia.net and we have all the roles are listed there. We would love to hear from you. Um, the second one, funding. Yes, it, Tim is our main developer and solutions architect here. Uh, and uh, look, the serverless movement really helped quite a few co companies, including us, to build this, bring this to market in record speeds. And we're very thankful uh, that Tim and AWS started taking the stance, you know, in, back in 2014, 2013, to bring this to market and democratize this. I think when we brought this new concept uh, to our investors and uh, they saw what this could be, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy concept to understand in the first, first wave, but when you understand the problem space, you see that the opportunity is pretty endless. And, and, uh, and I'll say this for our uh, investors, on behalf of our investors, that they saw a real founder market fit between us. We're literally the two people who have uh, launched and been ran businesses for both serverless and blockchain at scale. So that's what they thought was very attractive to them. And then Look, it's it's Tim and I, and we're looking to hire eight to ten folks. And I think we have uh, we have gotten to a space where uh, we're making a meaningful difference to the world. And we we would love for more people to join us, join this movement, and uh, and democratize this uh, dispersed data problem and solve for this um, and and help help us create more meanings to the data that are. Uh, customers and our, our companies worldwide are creating. Um, we're very excited uh, and we're very thankful for all of the, our investors uh, to be deeply committed to us and having conviction on us. Well, Shruti and Tim, first of all, congratulations uh, Thank you. on what you've you. done and absolutely looking forward to, to you know watching the progress going forward. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank awesome. you, Stu. Thank Thanks, you for Stu. Hello. All right, and definitely tune in uh, to our regular conversations on Cloud Native Insights. I'm your host, Stu Miniman, and looking forward to hearing more about your Cloud Native Insights.